Hello everyone, uh, this is Vasant Kumar, uh, Assistant Professor of Robotics. Uh, today we'll have uh, one lecture video on uh, programmable logic controllers, which are very crucial for any industrial application. Let us uh, go into it. So, uh, PLC stands for Programmable Logic Control. That means your logic can be programmed uh, in any typical way that suits to your industrial need. So why these PLCs are very popular because they are very robust, they can be applied in any typical industrial application where you require a typical control. So this course content or this video content would include the control process and then uh, the general uh, PLC uh, definition, then general architecture of a PLC, then um, about a PLC's operating cycle and uh, typical hardware that is associated with the PLC and uh, evolution for uh, typical PLC's architecture and then fundamental programming uh, part of a PLC and uh, listed out advantages of a PLC and its applications. So any typical process uh, you require a sensor that has to be connected uh, to a typical controller which will give any typical actuation similarly. In this case uh, we have a physical quantity that has to be sensed uh, which is generally in the form of voltage or current because your microcontrollers or a PLC uh, uh, setup would require uh, fundamentally current or a voltage in order to detect the temperature. That means there is a second transformation that happens there uh, which for example in this case uh, you assume the pressure. So pressure is physically sensed from the environment and then which is converted to a typical voltage. So this voltage is fed to a PLC. So for in general cases this uh, signals are very low. So uh, there might be a chance or there might be a requirement of amplification and then attenuation in certain cases. So uh, the, the second stage of after sensing is amplification. So this amplified signal uh, is uh, generally an analog quantity. So we require analog to digital conversion that would be the third stage followed by uh, this output is actually fed to your microcontroller or a PLC or a digital signal processor in order to process the signals and then get a defined, well defined output. So let us go into the block diagram. Uh, let us start with the fundamental part which is a physical quantity assuming it to be a temperature or pressure. So this quantity is converted into a typical value which is analog in nature by the sensor itself or in certain cases it requires some fundamental conversion or like a fundamental conversion which is uh, a conversion of an voltage or to a current. So this uh, data is fed to an amplifier. Amplified output is actually fed to uh, a 2 d converter. In certain cases, there might be a requirement of filter here in order to mitigate or completely eliminate the noise. After that, only the amplification process takes place. All this stuff includes a signal processing or in, in, in simple terms, it is called as uh, uh, a signal uh, conditioning. Uh, so this after signal conditioning, we apply this to a analog to digital converter. So better the bit value that means the more the number of bits for example you assume the difference between uh, an 8 bit A2D converter on a, uh, and a 32 bit A2D converter. A2D converters which are having more bit values the signal reproduction will be very very uh, nice in nature. So the better the bit value better would be the, uh, the quality of the signal after conversion. Uh, and this data is fed to a microcontroller. So this microcontroller would further uh, take up these signals which are converted, which are equivalent to the analog or the physical quantity. Then this data is processed to uh, output according to the logic that is written here in the form of control signals. It could be digital or analog to devices which are activated. So sensing and this process is conversion and uh, what you call signal processing and then which is forwarded to uh, the control part that is your pure uh, output. So let us have a GIF here. Here we have um, uh, a brick manufacturing or you can assume this to be a cement manufacturing. So we have some uh, truck which carries mud which are uh, milled up and then this milled uh, mud is actually transferred to an elevator and then uh, distributed to the output to various storage bins. So this uh, uh, process is a continuous process. So here uh, we have to control multiple things here. For example, you have to control the speed of the auger which is feeding to the elevator, then feed of the hammer that is milling up the, the soil or whatever the contents 
generally happens in an industry industrial area after this it has to be processed onto bins which has to be carried onto the storage part uh, so this process is a general uh, uh, industrial process if you could check there are certain levels for like bins like bin 1 2 3 and 4 so all these bins has to be uh, mixed up so various parameters that that exist here so uh, this industrial process can be controlled only when you have very robust control system so uh, if you go deeper into the plc that is it's a, it's it's completely a digitally operated system or an apparatus which is uh, a brick size generally uh, in terms of its shape and then this has some uh, programmable memory which stores all the data all the functions all the uh, data values which are fed from the, the sensors and then it creates it can implement the logic whatever you want here so the logic sequence if you could check loading of the thing into the bins then loading of this stuff into an elevator then transferring this stuff to distributor is the sequence so this sequence can be executed by a PLC. So it requires some timing, counting and then logic etc. Assuming all the bin levels are high, it has to be transferred to the external bin. So that logic is counting fundamentally. And then it has some arithmetic and logical functions. You can do some arithmetic and logic functions as well. So it controls various machines or a process. Uh, which are generally in digital or an analog in nature which can be an input or an output for example if you want to control a motor by pressing a pedal pedal pressing is fundamentally an, an analog input uh, the sensor would be analog or, or the input would be analog so this has to be transferred onto an analog device again which is a motor so this process is analog to analog control in cases like switch or, or push buttons so that would be a digital logic digital to analog control part uh, like coming to the part of traditional concepts of PLC, we have uh, PLC which performs fundamentally a relay function. Most of you guys know what is a relay. Relay will switch uh, a higher voltage or a current using a shorter voltage or current. So it, it performs a relay operations, any typical relay operations. Relays are generally available in your air conditioning units in order to regulate your uh, cooling. In, they are available in your washing machines, they are available in your uh, refrigerator systems which will control the cooling so relay is basically an on and off switch it performs all equivalent functions pertaining to relays plc's do perform an on and off control or a continuous control so it is designed for industrial environment what is this design for industrial environment is it follows certain safety standards that means they won't catch fire just like that when they are worked in, in typical industrial environment where fumes etc are mostly prevalent Coming to the part of general architecture of a PLC, we have inputs. So the input logic is fundamentally an interfacing unit that interfaces your sensors or input switches, etc., etc., onto a central processing unit by a typical isolation. What do you mean by an isolation is? So there won't be any physical contact, but there would be an optical contact. So it's an optical relay there. That means your sensor, which is uh, working with, let us say, 24 volts cannot uh, uh, for example your central processing unit is working with only 12 volts so there you require some isolation because it draws heavy current and the central processing unit might get damaged so uh, we have an input circuit which isolates your input to the central processing unit but still you get the data and similarly you have outputs which are generally motors which carry very high voltages so even that is also isolated so here it is mentioned as isolation barrier so isolation barriers are fundamentally optical isolators so internally it got some memory which is program memory fundamentally whatever the program that executes is using your program memory and then the data data values from the sensors are stored here so all these things are put on to a single system on chip that becomes your plc you have one more thing so for the entire PLC unit, it is always essential to have a redundant supply. So whenever your central uh, supply or, or the mains goes off, even the PLC should retain its data values because uh, uh, when, when the PLC's main power or, uh, or the external power supply is shut down, uh, so the PLC should not lose its data values so that you have a redundant supply. So that is generally an uninterrupted power supply for the PLC. So that completes a general architecture for the PLC and you have one more thing here 
uh, that is your communications if you want to dump some data read some data from the plc onto your pc or a high-end system so that is possible only with a communication channel most of us know it it is just like that of your usb cable that is connected to your phone and if you want to interface your phone to a pc you require an interfacing unit that is generally a usb here uh, in industrial processes nowadays it's very uh, it has become more advanced we have wireless uh, communication systems that work that are more uh, very much uh, uh, created uh, an impact on the industrial system so you need not to lay huge cables and get the data so you can just transfer the data whatever that is present in a particular plc using a simple wireless communication channel. So communications uh, uh, in most of the industrial areas are preferably wired because they don't want to lose the data. PLC operates in uh, a, a, a simple cycle which has four steps. So the first step would include uh, an input scan. That means it scans all the inputs in one go. That means whatever sensor data that is present. So it scans all the sensory data in one go. That is called as input scan cycle. After this input scan cycle, we have a program scan. That means whatever program you dump, whether your sensor values are giving an input to this program, so it will execute the ladder using this. So typically all the PLCs work with the typical logic called as ladder logic. We have uh, runs in uh, ladder logics which are scanned using internal memory uh, scan. After this, you have an output scan which will provide an output data onto your uh, the externally connected uh, driving units, let us say motors, etc. So after that, it checks for the memory that is housekeeping. In most of the cases, this housekeeping cycle can be skipped or uh, it is hidden. So there are fundamentally three steps. This step would be, uh, cannot be visualized in most of the cases. Uh, so that's all like uh, we have four steps, input cycle and that is input scan and the program scan and the output scan as well as housekeeping. The fundamental logic in housekeeping is it checks for the internal memory whether your internal memory is high, low or a medium like and then it checks for the speed of your um, operation whether the uh, communication is proper or whether your mem memory requirements are there. So all this stuff is scanned by housekeeping cycle. So if you just check uh, the signal flow we have input modules sensors will give data it will take into an input table that is image table it is called as uh, rung so the image dump, uh, table is dumped onto your ladder logic rung the horizontal part is called as a rung once the input data is updated it will ask for the output image table that means your output data whether to power up some motor or power up some light power up some uh, typical uh, fan or something and then this data would be given as an output through so in most of the cases we have uh, uh, modules which are uh, more uh, like very much mandatory in nature that that is uh, an input module is more modular in nature that means you can remove the input module and keep one more input module that enables uh, the biggest thing uh, that is you can replace once it loses its working uh, period and then um, you have a programming terminal in between if you want to change the program uh, so you can change the program by using a programming terminal generally this is a communication host so that's all about the signal flow you have inputs process to input image table process by ladder then to an output image table then it will process onto output modules output modules and input modules will always have some typical barrier which will protect the internal processing unit you, you can just check here so these input isolation barriers are always there because it has to protect the internal chips or internal uh, devices that are present let us move on to the next part which is hardware. So most of the PLCs will have uh, uh, two terminal blocks. One is your input and one is for your output. So inputs are meant for your sensors, outputs are meant for your uh, actuators. So all the PLCs that uh, comes, you can just see there's a, there's a brand called as Allen Bradley which is MicroLogic. That's a version, 2000 is a series. So it can work both with analog and uh, digital relay. So you can see some input uh, relays. Why these uh, input relays or input uh, switching uh, LEDs that are present are to, to check the status of your inputs. So if you are sitting in a control room uh, and your PLC is nearby you but in the field you have a sensor that is present. Uh, so you have to check the status of each and every sensor. So uh, you have some LEDs here. Similarly you have some output LEDs. 
So your PLC uh, choosing depends upon how much inputs you want, how much outputs you need it, and then at the same time you have some fundamental uh, financial issues that are that is how much it costs as well because it's an industrial type, so it always costs more. So even the the period of working also will more, the throughput also will be more, and. Uh, so uh, as I uh, told you in the earlier slides, that is modular chassis based PLC. That means you have a power supply chassis, you have a processor chassis, you have inputs, outputs, etc. All these things are modular in nature. That means you can remove them and you can just keep them. Uh, that 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 uh, plays a biggest uh, thing. That means, for example, a PLC like this, it's not modular PLC. You can just visualize all the inputs and outputs are just connected are hardware directly so you cannot uh, remove any typical thing if there is a damage in one particular input module that's it you, you have to throw out your plc and you have to bring a new one so that's a big drawback of uh, non-modular plc but in case of modular chassis based plc you can replace this processor you can replace this power supply but they are equally cost though and uh, uh, modular chassis less plc so these are like fixed vlcs you don't have uh, they 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 can't, they already come with all these typical things which were mentioned in like one single panel so you cannot uh, uh, allow any uh, removal or insertion that's a biggest drawback and moreover these are very huge in size so uh, even these are uh, equally huge in size but these are better like more uh, huge in size like and if you could just check uh, the general PLC blocks, you have a power supply generally which is 220. This sub power supply is converted to a DC power supply either 24 volts or like there is an industrial different industrial standards. You have that ranges from 5 volts to like 60 volts, 60 volts DC. So here you are supplying an AC which is of 220 and 50 hertz. And this is provided, uh, this uh, supply is provided onto your CPU which is 20 to uh, 5 to 48. Uh, so in this case it is mentioned as 12 to 48. But still you have uh, variants that will go from 0 to 60. So you have your personal computer that is connected using an RS-232. This is the typical communication part. Nowadays PLCs come with USB and a wireless as well. So when you want to dump a program onto a PLC you require this uh, communication channel. So you write your program in your personal computer dump onto your uh, uh, program onto your CPU for execution using a communication module only and then you have analog input, analog output, digital input and digital output modules that are present. So if you want to connect an analog sensor, you have to connect it to an analog input, uh, digital sensor, digital input, analog output uh, to uh, typical devices which will work with analog signals, digital output to signal uh, devices which work with digital output. So uh, what is the central processing unit? Uh, you have a CPU here. In every case, I have shown you a CPU. Uh, you can just check here, which is your central processor. So in all the cases, uh, what is the CPU means? It's a typically very rugged uh, arithmetic logic unit uh, associated with some internal memory for timers, relays, counters, flags, etc. All these things put together in a very rigid controller pack. Generally, this is this comes with a quad or a DIP package that is dual inline or like four lines. So dual inline packages will look like uh, some small chips uh, uh, which are which have both the sides. Uh, we have some connectors. It performs humorous uh, uh, numerous number of tasks that would include from uh, scanning and then uh, how to control your I/O bus traffic then program execution, peripheral devices that are connected to your system, special functioning, data handling, all these things together and as well as diagnostics on a simple chip. So these are some fundamental actions does uh, this uh, arithmetic and logic unit performs in the CPU. So we have some input module which will vary as I said, it varies from 0 to 20 volts in case of analog module. So for example, you have a pressure flow level and then a thermocouple that is attached uh, to your system should work with in this order. For example, if you are choosing a sensor, so it has to follow any of these voltages in order to communicate to your input module. Similarly, you have some output modules that are present um, uh, which are generally a control valve, speed, vibration, etc. So all these things has to be again given as an output from the PLC. So you have to regulate, give a regulation upon these voltage and current levels. Similarly, you have digital output modules, as I said, they vary from uh, 24 to, in this case, it is mentioned as 
115 volts, even 48 volts, even 60 volts. So that depends upon what standard of PLC you are uh, choosing. So the outputs in this case uh, would include solenoid valves, lamps, then certain actuators, dampers, pump valves, on-off valves, etc. All these things can be controlled by a simple digital output that is basically an on-off signal. So when it, when it comes to 0 volts, that means it's off. When it comes to uh, 48, 115, 60, etc. that means it's on. Uh, as I said, the power supply in general cases, it is more redundant in nature. That means you have, when the main power is lost, your, your redundant power supply should take the action. So it provides uh, power supply to all the things that would include CPU, I.O., uh, that is your analog input, analog output, digital input, digital output, and some expanded outputs. In, in this uh, figure, you can see there are some expanded inputs, expanded outputs. So, uh, so you have uh, power supply that is connected even for that as well. So the main aim of the power supply is to give a standardized voltage and standardized current uh, that drives your inputs and outputs. So let us start with the bus system. Bus system uh, is uh, fundamentally of uh, the internal bus system. So this will create uh, paths for uh, your transmission signals that is between the IO modules and then uh, several internal operators. For example, it has to fetch some data from a counter and to execute a ladder. So this bus system is the only way to get it. So each and every bus system has uh, two things. One is your memory bus, other, other one is your control bus. So your memory bus will allow your data values and the address bus will allow the data values uh, that are present at a particular location that has to be fetched. And the data bus uh, would get the data. So address bus is to uh, address a particular location. is It's just like uh, an email ID. So you have to write an address of your particular uh, recipient uh, in order to get the email. Uh, so he'll get the email only if he has an email ID. And the thing is, the data is what you write in the as a script in the mail. So your data is uh, that trans that transfers to your data bus. Your address that is uh, different address locations for the memory. Uh, has to be accessed that is your your reading or writing that will happen only with the address bus. So uh, uh, coming to the PLC architectural evolution you have uh, in mid 1970s uh, you have a discrete machine control that is DMCs uh, which are very fundamental but they have a lot of drawbacks they are humongous they are huge in nature their data processing capabilities are very low connection is between two points and then uh, there's a problem uh, in case of uh, programming it, reprogramming it while running, while execution. You cannot stop this uh, discrete uh, machine control devices when the program is in the middle of the execution. So you have to wait till the end of the execution. So that's the biggest problem that exists in 1970s. Led a lot of advantage, uh, advances that happened, uh, which has cleared all these issues and then made the PLCs very robust, very user friendly. So nowadays, uh, a 10 year old kid can program uh, a ladder logic by understanding what is connected as an input, what is uh, what has to be connected as an output. So that, that much uh, ease of use has come into picture, especially uh, the PLCs which work with RS, that is Rockwell software, uh, have made it very, very uh, user friendly. So uh, in DMCs, uh, they have not used any typical ladder, uh, relay based ladder program. They have used the fundamental fetch, decode and execute level uh, machine control. But here nowadays, we have uh, flexibility in altering, flexibility in changing the input value and then modifying the input value uh, and then uh, overriding the outputs, etc. All these things came into the later uh, advances. Now in uh, 1980s, we have uh, uh, PID based part that has come into picture that is uh, proportional integral derivative control which is very much required for any typical uh, industrial PLC uh, in order to tune up some outputs uh, according to the user requirements. And then uh, we have some uh, data storage advances that come in the middle part of 1980s that came into picture. The current evolution of PLCs are very much distributed in nature that means you have distributed modules and then that, that are connected with the data and the communication bus. So all these distributed I.O. modules will go near by the machine. That means you are running a CNC machine or a simple seeing machine or simple uh, cutting machine or whatever it is. So the module will, will be very nearer to that uh, 
machine so that that reduces the data loss in in place of uh, uh, the existing uh, previous versions so you have a distributed io scanner that will uh, do the job it will scan the data values and the communication uh, values from the different distributed io uh, modules that are connected with the machines now uh, today's part is very much redundant in nature for example if one plc is lost if the process is very crucial if the batch for example if you are doing a batch processing especially in case of a pharmaceutical industry or a chemical industry or in case of a fabric dyeing uh, industry where time plays a very crucial if you are losing the time that means you lose everything so in that case uh, redundant systems will take up the charge for example you have this plc which is working for one process for example this got failed and this will take into action that means all these things are very much redundant in nature that means you don't lose any data values you don't lose the process you don't lose the uh, time fundamentally so all these things um, are the current evolution that came into the picture so all these things will be linked up in a fiber data uh, system that is fiber optic link so you have splitters for the fiber optic link that will take up uh, the data values both onto your uh, redundant uh, PLC system. So th these are the IOs, these are your PLCs. So one PLC fails, other PLC will be into action. Now uh, there are uh, uh, discretized local control systems where you have um, uh, one controller that is connected onto a switch hub and then connected onto a workstation. So this will take up some process, this will take up another process. All these processes can be visualized onto a workstation and on the top of this you have some uh, like authoritative uh, workstations which will take up the charge now as i said uh, now industrial ethernet and then industrial uh, wireless control systems wireless uh, control devices have come into picture so we have uh, in this diagram you can visualize a plc which is connected to a, a, a wireless modem that is your wi-fi so the data the data is whatever that are present uh, on the remote platform can be transferred on to any typical uh, part and then you can visualize it on a HMI that is human machine interface and then a PC that is stored up all of the data. So there is no wire uh, in between these two things still you can access each PLC using this uh, uh, what do you call a PC. Then programming of a PLC is um, a tedious process uh, till 1980s but now as I said uh, the, the, there is a huge development in the uh, process of uh, human um, friendly programs so that made the ladder logic very very easy so it has uh, so when it comes to your plc uh, programming you have uh, uh, one thing that is very clear you have to program a ladder logic what is this ladder logic so since it looks like ladder we are calling it as a ladder logic so uh, it has two things in it one is two fundamental vertical lines that is uh, basically a positive and negative assume it to be positive and negative so in between you make up the circuits so i'll show you that uh, you can visualize uh, some functional uh, blocks that are connected in between the ladder logics that will perform certain tasks so that would be uh, an and or logic or a simple comparison and you have some uh, visual based c programming language that is a very advanced now uh, so you can just have a look so the most uh, popular and uh, most commonly used PLC is known as uh, PLC programming is known as ladder logic. So it re resembles a, a relay logic. Uh, for example, you, you want to write uh, a program that uh, activates one output for one input. So uh, it looks something like this. So it has vertical line, another vertical line. Let us assume this to be a line and this one is neutral. That is your positive and negative let us assume. So the each horizontal line is called as a rung or UNG and then you have some input instructions and output instructions that means if it is closed the output will be energized. If you are pressing a push button your motor will run. If you are releasing your push button the motor will be off. So you can visualize um, uh, these uh, inputs are of like different types of IOs that is in this case it is a normally open switch. It looks like a capacitor symbol but it is normally open and you have one more switch that is one more input uh, it is normally closed so all these things will have a specific address that is 1 is to 0 1 1 is to 0 2 1 is to 0 3 etc so they have a typical addressing nature even at the outputs you have 
B31, B32, etc., etc. So they have a typical address. So uh, at the end of your program, you have an end uh, that is that generally exists in most of the uh, visual-based programming or a typical text-based programming. So let us check uh, what is this and what is uh, what happens with the ladder logic. So you have a read instruction that is a conduction uh, thing, uh, conditional instruction. True. If it is true, if it is false, you'll get a false. That is, uh, there is no logical continuity here. So if you want to make some logical continuity, you have to make true true condition in order to make it true. That means in order to energize this uh, particular device, you have to make both the logics high or low. Uh, uh, that becomes a logical continuity. So if 4 and 5, that is just check the uh, thing here. If 4 or uh, the input 5 have power, then energize output 0. That means either of this, if they are having any high signal, for example, two sensors you have taken, any one sensor that has to give an output. So if that is the logic, you can go with some logic like this. So there are some uh, read-write instructions here. You can have a look. Uh, you can have a look here. So read instruction, it is examine on xic that is your code xio examine if it is off so when it is open it is false when it is closed it is true when it is zero it is false when it is logic one it is true so you can just check here in this case also it is always true but when it is logic high it will goes false that is a normally closed switch this is normally open switch uh, so you can visualize something here. This is this function is also called as a latch. Uh, sorry, uh, this function is called this in this case. If you want to retain your output for a longer time, or if you want to retain the output until you you need a reset, so that thing is called as latching. So that means you take the output and give as an input again. That becomes a latch. In this case, you can just check here. It is L, and the same L function is given here. That means it is creating a latch. So latch functions are required when you want to retain your outputs high for a particular period of time or until reset. So uh, uh, till now we have seen the fundamental uh, input uh, concepts but when you are dealing with special functions like timers and all, so uh, let us have an overview of that. So in this case uh, there are a lot of timers that are available uh, but out of which three are fundamental in nature. One is timer on delay and then timer of delay and then return to timer. Return to timers are uh, fundamentally when you require a retention of your uh, process, uh, uh, retaining your process on hold or on uh, continuous movement, we go with return to timers. But in most of the cases, these two timers are very much popular. The first one is timer on delay. That is uh, when you require an on delay, that means it has to switch on after a delay. So that timers are called as timer on delays. Timer off delays are when you are planning to switch off the device after a particular time, those are called as timer off delay. So you have an input, generally this input could be any typical function. So that enables your device, that is EN, EN stands for enabling. So your DN bit is generally your output bit, that means it will create an output that is done bit, that means it will create an on bit. So after timers, the immediate thing is uh, counters. When uh, counters are fundamentally two things: one is up counter, other one is down counter. Up counter, you can start from a preset value. So in case of timers, also you can give a preset value. Preset value stands for how much time you delay, uh, you create a delay. So in case of counter up, you have a preset value which is number of counts. So in this case, it's positive. In this case, it's negative. Negative in the sense it will start from minus ten to zero. It starts from uh, ten to zero. So both does most more or less the same functionality, but it depends upon the application how you are using. So comparison, but these are called special functions. You have uh, fundamental comparisons like equal to, uh, not uh, equal to, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. So all these things can be done in case of the comparison bits. For example, you want to create an equal thing when you want to maintain two tanks uh, level to be the same. So you keep one sensor here, another sensor in another tank. Once both the levels goes high, so then only your equal to uh, uh, comparison instruction will give an high output. Not equal to, when both are not equal to, it will give an high output. Less than, when one input is less than the other, then only it will give an high bit as an output. Similarly, all the things. 
So uh, based on uh, 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 the previous thing, you can create an AND logic using uh, simple input switches. That is input 4 and input 5 has to be on in order to create an output on. That is AND logic. Uh, that is input 4 should be high, input 5 should be high. This is basically used when you want to create a safety device. So you have two switches that has to be pressed in order to create an output. For example, a paper cutting machine or a fabric cutting machine. When you want to press both the inputs, uh, then only uh, your both the hands are engaged. So that's a safety part. So you, you are creating two switches here, two sensors, let us assume. Both the sensors goes high, then only your output goes high. Similarly, you can do OR logic as well. So what is the ad biggest advantage uh, of uh, PLC says? It's use uh, uh, its biggest ease of programming. That means uh, the programming part nowadays, the current generation PLC, it is very easy to program. Uh, it is very easy to maintain as well. And uh, they are, as I said, they, they follow particular IP standards. Um, uh, they have intrinsic safety and closures that are used for packing up the electronics. So it is designed for um, industrial environment. They are uh, also suitable for uh, extreme environmental conditions. You can quickly install and you, if, if it is a modular device, uh, you can uh, change it very quickly. They are adaptable to change. Uh, that's the end of the video. Thank you. Thank you so much.